she was committed and you know excited to get this started so we start and what happened was a complete like flip of the switch and this was someone who who then started like well this is not gonna i can't do this move because this hurts and i'm like oh but you didn't mention and that injury in your intake questionnaire so and she's like oh yeah well that hurts this is the online trainer show trainer show trainer show this is the online trainer show we shouldn't have a podcast from two of your orifices <laughs> <laughs> orifices, orifices, orifices. orifices. <laughs> what the hell are we talking about, Miss, Miss What Miss Tacos? I miss, I tacos. miss tacos. Yes, um, we are talking about what is the title, Amber? I don't know. Amber said it. I mean, they may change it later, but for no now, have clients when to troubleshoot or to let them go. Mm. Aww. Well, this sounds interesting. But what was it? What's the song? The country song that you named it after? When to hold them, when to fold them. It's the gambler. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Well, listen, Kenny I'm not Rogers a fan did. of country, okay? So I'm like, well, I know it's a country song, but I'm not sure. Well, now, what is your, oh, I, I know what your, reggaeton is your, is yes. your favorite. Yeah. Yes, that's that's my kind of jam. Like, especially if I want to get, like, pumped up, amped up for a workout. That's what I do. Pretty, pretty far away from Kenny Rogers. Yes, definitely. <laughs> know when to fold them. No when to walk away, no when to run. You never count your money. <laughs> you're sitting at the table, time enough to count up when the dealing's done. It's a classic song. I mean, um, if you only know one country song, you need to know The Gambler. Let's just go ahead. <laughs> Let's go ahead. And there was a movie, like there was a, a TV mini movie or something where Kenny Rogers starred as The Gambler. Really? Yeah. So it yeah, was it's, a whole it's, thing. It was a whole vibe. It's out there. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole, it's, it's a whole production, like this <laughs> podcast. It's a whole big production. Have we started yet? Is this what we're going to talk about? I don't, I don't know if I have, I don't know we're that I have, tri- what'd you say? Huh? We're going rogue this week. Yo, John. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't know that I have tremendous insight here uh, because I, I can be so petty uh, with people that annoy me. I. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, like... <laughs> you just can them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a highly tolerant individual, but there are some things that I just... I don't have a great skill set of patience for. So this is a good discussion. I, I will contribute, but I'll learn something. If you guys are just joining and wondering where Jonathan is, he, obviously he's in a federale prison in Mexico. Um, <laughs> they, Clearly. <laughs> yeah, totally. Gonna, they deemed that his stubble was not at the appropriate amount of 5 o'clock shadow. He's clean shaven. They throw you in jail in Mexico for that. So he won't be here. I'm sorry, prison. So he won't be here today. Uh, but but we we're gonna talk about things. We we feel like we have enough intellectual property here to to hold a discussion on the level that we typically do on this podcast. Like <laughs> we're not promising any improvement today, but we can we can safely say there will be no drop off. It's not gonna be any worse than any other podcast that we've done. We we feel we feel confident saying that. So we'll give it a go. If it, de- if it doesn't work out, you'll never hear this podcast. If you're hearing it, we just couldn't find anything better to put up this week. Uh, we didn't have any interviews we could use, so uh, I guess you're welcome out there. Uh, enjoy, yeah. So, Kato, you know I don't often get to talk to you, you know, at the beginning of the podcast because usually. Jonathan's telling an extensive travel story, right. um, but what's what's going on with you? Like how how were things? L- last I heard, you guys were ra- roped in. You couldn't leave. You couldn't do stuff. That's like, what's correct. going on right now. Well, there's a snowstorm, but guys, guys, <laughs> guys, there is a squirrel living in the wall oh, inside no. the wall oh, in no. my bedroom. <laughs> Oh no, we're back what to that again. isn't about me and rodents? I will never understand. It's like they follow me. Why? Now, have you have you ever thought that perhaps the the marsupials, uh, the small mammals in your area, are somehow attracted to the bombshell scent that you have from uh, what is it? Victoria's Secret is that your the bombshell? Oh, right, right. Yeah, the, the perfume, perfume you have. Yeah, do, do you like? Have you ever sort of turned it to the back to see if there's any warning? It may attract small mammals, marsupials, woodland creatures. You might want to double check. Oh, Amber, if you can go online, you know, if you get an opportunity, just check on that. It's not super important. 
But if you get time, I know you're busy. Uh, where's Where's Nate? By the way, I thought Nate Nate Nate's making an appearance on the podcast today. Yeah, uh, Nate is. Nate's busy. He's doing He's doing basically the same thing that Kettle does on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Like sitting there surfing the web, I don't know, (laughs) eating. At the moment, I I think he was finger painting. Is that what he was doing? (laughs) Making. Okay, so it's just it's just like Jonathan's here. Um, It's basically the same person. Thanks so much. The little V neck. Yeah, he's got a V neck. Yeah, yeah. We need get a get a V neck on that kid. We need a fourth for this podcast. Uh, so this thing goes in the right direction uh, from the, the Jonathan Goodman children, the PTDC kids line of V-necks, uh, <laughs> ranging from, from toddler to like 4T. Um, so now that we've covered the important things on this podcast, Kettle's got rodents. Uh, Nate's here giving the same level of contribution that Jonathan normally would. Uh, Amber's going to have to talk today. I've got on a hat just to protect us because I didn't know how this thing was going to go today. I knew that I couldn't do this show hatless. The last mm-hmm. time I did that, we had an awkward show. I didn't want to go back down that road. So so we're going to give you guys some value. Probably mostly nonsense, uh, but but some value. Because we're going we're gonna to talk about, you know, when, when is it time? And this is an unofficial title. I don't know what the title is going to be. I haven't read the thing yet. Amber will figure it out or she'll outsource it to John. But we're just trying to figure out, like, when is it time to uh, retool what you're doing to get the best out of your client? And when is it time to just sort of fourth down punt your client into the stratosphere and just <laughs> <laughs> kick, kick them through a field goal post? Uh, yeah, just just get like pluck the lint from your shirt that is your client. And I'm joking. We obviously we care about and respect and we love our clients here. The the client. That's the real reason we, we're here. Um, the client's the MVP. Uh, but sometimes, you know, <laughs> there are some clients, who, it's sort of like that, um, what's the movie, it's, uh, I was about to say Tom Cruise, but it's not Tom Cruise, it's Tom Hanks. The uh, captain, the thing we use the boat, he gets, uh, yeah, and you, yeah, you just like, look at me, look at me. I'm the captain now. Like, sometimes you have to do that <laughs> to your clients, man, because uh, people are unruly, right? Like, and, and I talk about this a lot in terms of coaching with the, uh, with the OTA students. Amber, I know you have these conversations as well. Keto, not to be discredited. I know that you're, I know that you're out there in the community. Uh, Keto, you're, you're in the internet streets and you're answering <laughs> questions all the time. Uh, I typically see you answering questions in the, in the Girls Gone Strong group. Um, however, you know, you're, 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 you're a top-notch coach in, in, this, in this arena. For for what we have to select from uh, for this podcast, <laughs> top notch coach, you got to qualify it right. You just, I don't want to just throw that out there. You know, generally uh, there there is there is a selection process here. So from what we got here, you're top notch coach. But what I was going to say is, I know that people sort of struggle with uh, with planning out what they're going to do in terms of their processes and kettle the show that aired today. Uh, as we're recording, was your brilliant episode about your enrollment process mm. and sort of the things you learn when you get in it, right? Yeah. What's what's the uh, what's the phrase Amber from James Clear is something like optimize later? Uh, is that the entire phrase? Uh, my favorite quote from him? No, not your favorite quote, but it it is a quote. He talks about start now, optimize later. I think mm, is what the, yeah. yeah. So start now, optimize later. So one of the things you're going to find out when you start now, the main reason that you're going to have to optimize later is because you've added people to your process. <laughs> yes. And, and once you add people, everything gets messed up. Uh-huh. Everything is. Uh, <laughs> so in that vein, we wanted to talk today about, you know, and Amber, we think that the, uh, the, the, the title will be something along the lines of, and I'm really dating myself here. The, the great country singer Kenny Rogers, uh, you know, had a, a, an amazing song called The Gambler. Um, I'll, I'll sing a few bars if you've not heard it. Uh, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your money. Why you sitting at the... You got to have to pause there after money. You never count your money. 
Why you sitting at the table every time enough count up when dealing's done? So when do you hold your thank you, thank you very much. I don't often do country in this venue. Uh and I try to never do it with a Nike hat on. I pulled a hamstring last time I did that. But you know, when do you hold on to a client and when is it time to fold it up? You know? Firing clients not a great term that I like to use. But we'll use it for the purpose of this podcast. I mean, the one that aired today, Jonathan was talking about pushing the elderly out of the way to get a COVID vaccine because <laughs> podcasts, podcasters have uh, are considered essential. Uh, so I think we can say fire a client if Jonathan can push uh, push the uh, the infirm and elderly out of the way to uh, get to the front. And I'm just joking. It's just jokes here. Don't write us letters. They go to Amber anyway. Uh, but don't write us letters. <laughs> So so let's let's dive in here, which would be free, freakishly early into the podcast. We've only spent 15 minutes with nonsense, um, but we want to talk about can you improve the relationship with the current client that's challenging or is it just a bit too challenging? Um, and I don't I don't have a lot of great insight here. Um, I'm sure I'll, I can make some stuff up that sounds really good for the purposes of this broadcast, which is what I normally do. (laughs) But we're all going to sort of chime in a little bit about that experience uh, of someone that you just can't seem to connect with. Um, And since 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 Keto sort of uh, prompted the conversation in this case, and she's been an absolute rock star all of 2021, (laughs) I mean. We, uh, her shoulders should be tired. Her, her back, her. She should have a lumbar issue for carrying this podcast <laughs> through, through 2021. Jonathan's been phoning it in. You know, he's more concerned with the the sunshine in Mexico. I've been halfway entertained by it. I, I bought an iPhone recently, so I play with that most of the time that I'm on the podcast. Kettle's really been carrying the thing. Um, but Kettle, get a get us started here. Let, let's start. Let's start with the creative process of this podcast. Tell us what prompted you to to sort of submit five minutes before this podcast happened. This topic. <laughs> of, yep, that is totally true. Maybe four. Yeah, five might be generous. Uh, four minutes before we started, what what caused you to think of this this topic? Uh, the people want to know. The reason that came up is actually because I was thinking back to the one time in my entire story in coaching in which I, I had to fire a client. And uh, I was thinking about her and I'm like, oh my God, like, just like, I got stressed even remembering, like, it was so bad. (laughs) And then I was like, I was like, oh, have we talked about this? And I don't know, we should probably cover this in the podcast at some point. Let me me interject (laughs) this really quickly for the listening audience. If it's months, weeks, or years later, and you think about a person that you're working with and you get stressed, that's somebody that you probably should have fired as a client. Let's yep. let's use that as a barometer. Like yep. if the, if you have waking nightmares uh, about a particular person, yep. probably should have let them go sooner. So, Keto, you know, w- without using names uh, mm-hmm. and minimizing Petty Carol to the extent that you can, as you relate a <laughs> story, can you? We don't want too much Petty Carol. It's too early. It's too early for too much Petty Carol. Can you give us sort of the story of what happened with this client? Absolutely. Uh, and, and Amber and I will listen intently and in no way be distracted as you're talking. In no way. I know you. I know. You've got all of our attention. Sure. <laughs> so this was actually years ago and this was actually an in-person client. And but I mean, the same kind of situation that happened with me uh, with her uh, could essentially happen in an online training situation. So uh, the same parameters can apply the, you know, the same crappy situation would be difficult online or in person. And um, so I met, she found me online. We met, she was very excited. She was somebody who had already done a lot for herself. She had already lost like a hundred pounds on her own just by changing the way that she ate and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, she was committed and, you know, excited to get this started. So we start. And what happened was a complete like flip of the switch and this was someone who who then started like well this is not gonna i can't do this move because this hurts and i'm like oh but you didn't mention and that injury in your intake questionnaire so and she's like oh yeah well that hurts and then oh no i can't do that because that hurts no that my knee no that hurt so everything was a problem 
So essentially every training session became a freaking circus for me of trying to like <laughs> on the moment switch around and, and you know, we do that, like we're trained for that. And we have so many tools in our tool belt that there, there was always an answer, but it was exhausting because it was every single session to the point that the thing that worked fine last week suddenly this week was like nope i don't and then she and then she openly she would be like why are we doing this again if i already did this move last week and i'm like because this is a program and there is a progression and there needs to be continuity well no i get bored i i want to do all new things every single session yeah. are you kidding me and then i'm having to jump through hoops in the moment trying to figure out what doesn't hurt no so right off like super stressful right and then it gets better <laughs> because she had my phone number and she was a type oh, of person to call and text at all hours of day and night and expect an answer within 15, 20 minutes of her text oh coming gosh. in. I'm going to pause you right there. Amber, are you listening to this cautionary tale? Because mm -hmm. Amber, Amber has boundary issues. So for those that don't know, don't if you reach out to Amber, she's probably going to reach back for like in three and a half minutes. Um, I don't know when she sleeps. Uh, but Amber, I want you to listen closely to this part, right? Okay, and I and I don't I don't want you to feel attacked. I want you to feel <laughs> empowered by what. <laughs> I want you to feel empowered by what Carol's about to say. Oh, I'm sorry, Carol. Please continue. Yeah. So it didn't matter how much I tried to explain. Like, hey, I have a family. I have a life. I have a house that I take care of, and this is not my entire life. Well, no, I'm paying you, and if I'm paying you, I demand to be taken. You know, to oh, be, no. yeah, to have your attention when I need it. So she was also that kind of person. It's like, I'm giving you money, so I own you, essentially. <laughs> right? You Just from what you know about me and my personality, you just imagine how that sit, sits with me. Like I'm like, mm, we're going to have, oh you know, I'm going to throw hands here. I don't know. Something's going to happen. <laughs> Kung Fu Kettle's coming out. I would love to see you throw hands. Right. And me too. I would, I would love to see that also. <laughs> You know, she, it, I, I think in my mind, if Keto was like a kung fu like action star, like all of her techniques would come from the woodland creatures that invaded her house, uh, like squirrel, <laughs> sh squirrel technique. Uh, you know, dead the possum princess ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dead possum defense. Um, you know, you'd have you'd have all the best woodland creatures kung fu techniques, Keto. Uh, almost like, uh, almost like Captain Planet. I don't know if you guys remember Cla Captain of Planet. Of course. But it, yeah, but it was these kids, you know, like that's how Ke like Keto would be like squirrel, possum, uh, you know, deer, uh, marsupial, and then they'd all form like one, like one highly skilled kung fu Keto. Uh, but I digress. That's not important for this story. I Please, love this. So, so, so Keto, th this this young lady whose name is obviously Janice Richardson. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Her. I don't, we don't know her name. I made that up, Janice. Calm down. Um, but this person had you to the point where you felt um, very combative about mm -hmm. her violation of your of your boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? What else? Anything else in this particular case that you that you remember? Um, yes. That was just okay. And there's there's more, huh? Yeah. The biggest right. one was that with her, it it almost became a matter of safety. Like I started feeling unsafe around her because she was so volatile. It was like, but I already told you last time that I don't like that. It was like, whoa. Right. Like first, of, nobody talks to me like that. And second of all, like, are you okay? Like, I don't think like is there's an underlying something here that was not disclosed and that I am not equipped or prepared to deal with. So it started feeling like an unsafe situation. And um, so once you put everything together, that for me is like there is no way that I can do this. There is no way that I started hating my job because there was anxiety every time that I heard my phone buzz or that I knew that I had to see her. It's not worth it. Like that is that was for me the the hard line that I was not willing to to pass. And so so I yeah, I fired her. <laughs> that was can, a conversation. Can, it happened over the phone. I can tell you that. <laughs> I was about I was about to ask that the uh, almost a new show, like The Apprentice, but for Carolina, <laughs> right. you're fired. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, we need that Jeff. <laughs> we need to we need to kettle your fire, Jeff. You're fired. So can can you? Because I know the people want to know 
G- give us some inclination, and I don't expect you to remember it word for word, but give us some inclination of like what that conversation was like for you. First of all, was it was it super uncomfortable for you? Because it's like the the only time you had to do it, or were you at the level at that point where you didn't care about how comfortable the conversation was, or was it? Yeah, like, I'm just as a in general, I tend to be very comfortable with difficult conversations. <laughs> I'm totally fine. I like, you know, if there's big feelings or whatever, I'm okay with dealing with big feelings from other people. I'm totally cool with that. So, right. um, and especially because I knew what was on the line was my own enjoyment of my job and my own ability to just get back to my awesome energy, you know, that I can enjoy what I'm doing. So, um, so there was a lot at stake and it was a no brainer and, but here's how I did it though. And this is like a key part that I think, uh, a lot of new trainers, especially should keep in mind when mm-hmm. you find yourself with a client that you are now for whatever reason, uh, unable to continue working with, don't just throw it. I mean, you could just be like, you know what? You suck. And then that's right. it. Like, I don't ever want to <laughs> talk to you again. It's like, I mean, technically you can, <laughs> but right. you probably shouldn't. What I did is that before calling her, I reached out to another trainer friend of mine here mm-hmm. in town, local, a super sweet guy, very compassionate, very understanding. And I explained the situation. I didn't hide anything from him, but he was still very much like, oh, that's okay. I'd be willing to give it a try. Like, and thank mm-hmm. you for the warning. And sure, pass her on to me. Right. So when I called her, I wasn't just dropping her like a hot potato. I was actually referring her out to somebody else. So in that sense, you also protect yourself then from the potential, you know, horrible Google review or whatever it is that you're fearing, because at least you're doing your due diligence and continuing, you know, going that extra step for them, even though you feel they don't freaking deserve it. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. It won't warn you down to your last nerve. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, second seed of Satan. So... <laughs> Hey, Jonathan Goodman here. This podcast is made possible thanks to people like you. Here's a quick word from our sponsors. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly, and it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the Online Trainer Show, you get a free 60-day trial, so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. If you're a fitness nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people, make more money, and have more freedom, then the Online Trainer Academy can help. OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. In some cases, I've seen this argument and you, you guys chime in. I've seen people in some of the groups that we're in say, oh, you never fire a client. Uh, or I've seen people who are fairly cavalier about firing clients. You know, they they, they fire more clients than uh, than than any anybody else. Like and I'll, and I'll go to Amber here. What's what's your theory on the subject, Amber? Like and, and oftentimes we don't live in the extremes as coaches. Uh, but is there one particular side that you lean to more than the other, Amber? Yeah, so I tend to lean more that if, if we've gotten to the point where I feel like I need to fire a client, 
I dropped the ball somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because either I took them on when I shouldn't have because I felt desperate for money or I couldn't handle saying no to them for whatever reason. Um, Or I just wasn't the best coach for them and it's just not a good match. Um, So generally, with certain exceptions, I say that it's my fault. Um, But, you know, short of like, you can't always spot someone who's abusive, like who Carolina was dealing with. You can't always spot those type of things. And those are outliers. But like when you're talking about like in the Facebook groups, somebody like, oh, here's my client. And they said this. And like 50 coaches are like, oh, fire them. Like, uh, no, like your job is to coach them. Right. Do better and be better. Right. Um, so it depends. But like I would say 98% of the time, if it comes to the point where firing needs to happen, look inward first. Right. Right. I that makes love sense. that. I really love that because it's true. We like in jumping the gun, we miss out on the big learning opportunities for ourselves, right? And if I may kind of like expand on that point, Amber, I remember when I, I when I had this super awful client, I was actually going through the uh, Precision Nutrition Level 2 certification, which is all about the science of actually coaching people. And I'm going through this horrible situation and I remember like employing all the techniques and all all the stuff that we were learning in the cert and not nothing was working, right? And I had a conversation with Krista Scott Dixon, who mm-hmm. I adore. And um and she's in her a genius brilliancy, of our time. Yeah, yeah, she's a genius of our time. I love her. Um and I remember her saying to me, she's like, in these kind of situations, we try all that we can try, we do our best, and once you've done that and it hasn't worked, you're okay to let it go. Like you don't need to like try and, and full, you know, try to get the best of your ability. And if it mm-hmm. doesn't work, it's okay. Like sometimes some situations, some people really are just not a good fit and you don't need to uh, feel guilty over that either. So that was kind of like from, from a mentor, that was kind of like the blessing, I guess, that I needed in that moment to just finally just cut ties and be like, okay, I'm done. Because I, I know that I've tried absolutely everything in the book. It's not working. She's just like this and I'm out. And then at my confirmation, my friend Sean, who took her on, not even two weeks. And he was like, screw that. No, no, no. Like, forget. And he's like, nope. No. And he was like, no, Carol, you were not wrong. You were not imagining things. She's awful. Right. And now right. Go to other trainers in the area. <laughs> now, now all the trainers there know her. Um, yeah, she's, pretty much. She's experienced every coach in, in that area. So how about this? Like. Let's talk about some obvious situations where you may want to find a way, well, fire the client. I, I was trying to figure out a better way to say it, but we'll, we'll, just, we'll just say it the way it needs to be said. Um, and and one, co- one that comes to mind for me is if, if things are sort of out of the physical scope. Now, Keto was talking about this, this client that um, who had a new physical challenge every time if there was a workout but there are Mm -hmm. some cases where we're sort of outside of the scope right and and things pop up that you weren't aware that the client had uh you know up front hopefully you wish i've i've had situations where clients have not disclosed something to me up front and when i find out i'm like ooh, yeah this this isn't good um i'm i'm not sort of dropping you but i need to refer you out um had an online client that told me she had a pacemaker after a month, uh, mm-hmm. you know, didn't disclose it in all the, inf- you know, mm-hmm. all the stuff that we went yeah. through and wow. yet right. Wow. Indeed. <clears throat> and she mentioned it casually, you know, because the pacemaker was off or something. I was like, what did you just say? Did you say pacemaker? <laughs> um, I hope you said peacemaker, you know, and, and you're an international secret agent who destabilizes <laughs> foreign countries that are adversaries of the United States. But I think you said pacemaker. Um, and that's what she said. So I was like, you know, as a coach, I don't feel comfortable coaching you through this without consent of your primary medical professional. Can you send me literature from them? Or can I speak with them? Will you sign HIPAA so that I can get the information? However, we need to get to the bottom of this. But at this point, and, and what I did was I refunded, you know, a prorated amount of, of what she paid me. Uh, up until that point. So that's, that's fairly obvious for me. Number two, and I like to get you guys to chime in on this is something that we run into a lot of times as coaches and, uh, and with respect across the continuum 
of, uh, of behavioral science and mental awareness and things like that. But sometimes I know that I get people who, who actually probably need to prioritize therapy uh, mm-hmm. and they're trying to sort of supplement that need with exercise, fat loss, nutrition. Uh, they have disordered eating patterns or behavioral challenges or mm-hmm. mental, uh, mental, um, mental diagnoses that I'm not equipped to, to deal with as a coach. Like the coach, like losing 10 pounds is not going to solve the, the root of what the issue. Like, have you ladies ever run into that? Like when, when you t- t- talk, share with the people, talk to the people a little bit about that. I, I don't, I don't care who goes first because quite frankly, I don't know who's who. Uh, I don't pay attention like most <laughs> listeners. We're just the I just, women. I just know that the, the there women. are other women here. Without John, I don't. I don't know any of the other names. Um, <laughs> one with yellow hair here and the one with brown hair. Yeah, right. One's <laughs> one's blonde. I think. I don't know. I don't pay that much attention. Um, but yeah. So I, and I'll start with Carol because she's been saving the day here you know, every every episode. But have you had that situation, Carol? And I know you you hold a lot of space for these types of situations. You mm-hmm. educate us a lot in the Girls Gone Strong continuum about paying attention and trauma and, and things like that. But do you feel like sometimes coaches are involved in a situation that doesn't have a lot to do with the coaching necessarily and has more to do with you probably need to refer out? Yes, that happens very often. And I think a lot of trainers can relate to the fact that sometimes you feel almost like like your part shrink which we are not, that is completely out of our scope of practice, obviously, but because of the amount of time we spend, uh, you know, either in person or uh, exchanging communication with clients, they, a lot of the times they do tend to open up, especially because um, for a lot of people, uh, for example, in nutrition coaching, they're they're eating patterns that have led them to now uh, having to change. Um, Those eating patterns usually stem from super difficult either trauma or, you know, difficult childhoods or different, difficult relationships, emotion, emotional eating, all this kind of stuff. So by the nature of our job, there typically will be a degree of, um, emotional and mental health support that our clients need. So we, I think it is absolutely in our responsibility to become educated in mm-hmm. what those things are, what are the red flags that we need to look for, um, have in like be prepared with a number of professionals that we can refer them out to. That is the most important thing. Like you need to have like a directory of people who specialize on eating disorders or people who specialize in uh, healing trauma, abusive childhoods, uh, emotional eating, all this kind of stuff that feels like a lot, but it is absolutely related to our client's journey. So we, we should have that always. That's, that's, that's a good point. Am, Amber, have you, have you found yourself in, in that quagmire, as they say, in, 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 in the quicksand uh, of being a uh, psychotherapist accidentally. Yeah, yeah kind of like bartenders. We're kind of like bonus therapists, right? Right. So true. So, especially with, so with my demographic working moms, like often, you know, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, general anxiety, uh, all of that tends to be wrapped in my demographic. It's pretty prevalent. Um, so having to learn to find the line of, okay, where do I listen and when do I refer out. And like Carolina said, I have people that I refer out to, um, especially I have a a local person, but she does stuff online and I refer everybody to her when it makes sense. Um, because I mean, we don't want to be that person. We we don't want to be the therapist because I think most trainers are exceptionally empathetic and we take on what our clients are feeling. And at the end of the day, we don't want to be feeling like garbage because we've become the emotional outlet for everybody. Um, so learning to set those boundaries and knowing when to refer out is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And can I say that I, I love how supportive Nate is of your best points. Like when you make a great point, <laughs> Nate really drives it home. Yeah, I totally agree with you, mother. Uh, I love that. It's just a, you're just raising a quality human there uh, because he is so supportive of your statements. Uh, and, and I love that about him. I love that about him. Um, just, just supporting. So, yeah. So here's what I found out as a, as a coach who coaches moms over 30, the hierarchy of people that they talk to is, you know, for believers, probably Jesus. Uh, then for some reason, me, (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm number. I'm right behind the son of the living God uh, for any problems that they have. Uh, then, then they're cosmetologists. And then somewhere way down is a professional who actually went to school for counseling and therapy. So, so yep. you, you really, and maybe you're not totally firing the client, you know, all the way around, but I think there are nuances, right? There are parts of the client relationship that you have to fire. You know, I can't be your cardiologist here. I'm going to need you to talk to him about your pacemaker, man. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, is is circuit training better for people with pacemakers or or do you think steady state car man like I, I need you to talk to your cardiologist about that um you know and you know rent i'm just i'm just having so much tension with my husband um i just don't feel desirable anymore and you know his erections are, hey well ma'am ma'am <laughs> ma'am i'm i 100 percent apologize you know i want to hold space for you in this in this way Perhaps a marriage counselor would be a better, um, you know, I, a, a lot of times <clears throat> clients will approach us as a more affordable option than, uh, than a medical professional or a, a, a you know, a, a psychiatric professional. And we just get sort of thrown in to fit the bill in every, like, we're, we're a Swiss army knife of, of, of their lifestyle, right? That so is true. It's yes. so true. It's so true. So so maybe you're not firing the whole client, and, or maybe you're firing parts of the relationship, or maybe you're firing yourself in some of the categories that they want to put you in. That's that's really, that's re also very, very crucial. Um, so mm -hmm. let's talk about, you know, how do I know? Like, what, what are the telltale signs for me that, okay, I've got this client situation. I've tried everything that I can. This is, this doesn't seem to be working. Like, cause, cause Amber and Keto both made great points. Keto was like, you know, I, I thought about this lady year recently, uh, from years ago. And, and I, I was like, I need to get off this off my chest on the online trainer show. Uh, and to Amber's point. Amber's like, well, you know, I try to look inward to make sure that things that, that, that I'm, that I'm not doing that maybe there are things I'm not doing that I can improve on that will maybe better the relationship. Maybe it's me, you know, I'm, I'm Amber looks inside of Amber and Amber, if she doesn't like what Amber sees, Amber doesn't, Amber doesn't do the same things. Amber changes. Uh, and she references herself in third person all the time. Like I do. <laughs> so <clears throat> she did that to me more than once. So I was, she's like, have you sent your invoices for this month for, for your payment? I was like, no, Amber's going to need that money. Amber's going to need that money now, baby. <laughs> Amber doesn't want you on the street making that money and not giving me my cut. You better. <laughs> so when Amber asks you for the money, you better have Amber's money. And that's, that was, a, that was a conversation we had off topic, <laughs> off topic, but Amber's a PIMP. I don't, you know, I don't know what you heard about her. In any case, that's not what's important. But to, to the point, you know, Keto said, Hey, this lady, she, Took me, she took me there. I was about to throw the kettle hands, uh, the squ squirrel, squirrel technique on her. Uh, and Amber's like, I'm looking inward. So between those two places, like, what are some of the telltale signs that yes, this relationship needs to end? Get kettle, do you, anything come to mind there for you? You've had this experience. Yes, when you physically feel like almost like a. <laughs> Yeah, like a kind of feeling every time you think about having to deal with this client in particular. That is um, that is a sign that you need to sit with those feelings and understand exactly what the heck is going on. Because trust me, you don't want those feelings to stay with you for months or years or however long the coaching relationship have. It's not sustainable. It's not enjoyable. You don't want it. So either you dive inside and you decipher where it's coming from and if there's a fix and if it's all uh, brought on uh, because of how terrible or how inappropriate or how racist or how, I mean, there's a ton right. of things that could elicit that kind of physical response in different people, right? Um, and, and, and even that, like some things can be addressed if you have the, the energy for it and if you feel capable, you have, you know, the words and, and the communication for it. And sometimes you can't. And that's okay. I think the only issue that I take with firing clients is, as we were mentioning, like in the groups, when people are just like jumping the gun, like, oh, they're not committed, or fire them. I'm like, right. what are you doing? <laughs> like, who, what? Like, no, fire yourself out of this 
industry like what no like it's ridiculous like how are you oh well yes. my client you know she said she was gonna try but she's not sticking to the meal plan so i think i have to fire her are you freaking kidding me like no like be better do better learn yeah. our very our very considerate group members uh who who are always holding space for the uh and empathetic for everyone that posts uh you know that's that's a rough place to ask a question man um, but for for you and, and and Keto 100% and I love that you touched on sort of the um, sort of the like non-negotiable de- non-negotiable deal breakers as a human you know yeah. racism sexism I'm sure we had a conversation about the sexual harassment uh, things of that nature that are just 100% deal breakers as a human yeah. let alone a client you know you you, you need to get out um, please out there for the folks listening. Don't minimize yourself in any way to deal with something that's fundamentally against the grain of who you are as a human because you've gotten money from a client or because you need the money. Like it never pans out. It, oh. it, it never, yes. ever works. You never the you don't even notice that you've gotten the money. Like, really, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it takes a bigger toll. But, but and, and thanks for bringing that up, Carol. Amber, on your end, so sort of what what have been indicators of you that, okay, it's it's time for me and this client to to separate, to part ways? Yeah, so I think for me, the first thing I'll I'll typically do is is wait until I'm not like an emotional state, right? Like don't make any decisions when you're in your feelings um, as a general rule of thumb for life. Um, But then I, I play the fact or fiction game, like go back through whatever has caused me to feel like I need to get rid of them and what are facts or what, and what are feelings and what are feelings? Why am I feeling that way? Um, and I kind of analyze the situation that way. And like Carolina said, at the end of the day, if it is bad for my quality of life to be interacting with them, or I find that I am just not the right coach for them for whatever reason, that it is okay to let them go. Um, it's just a matter of like, and the groups not, doing your job and blaming the client like mm-hmm. that's the problem just because they're quote unquote lying about what they're eating that that's a that's a coach issue that's yeah. something you guys need to work on not right well they suck so i'm gonna fire them that's when i have an issue <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but generally speaking yeah like if if it causes knots in your stomach to think about even having to deal with them that day uh, that's a problem for both of you um so it's not fair to you to keep them on. And it's certainly not fair to them either. So if it, it, it's in the best interest of everyone to, to move forward separately, then do that. Yeah. So so basically, if you feel about your client the same way that I feel about math, then it's probably <laughs> time to let it. That's what I'm that's what I'm hearing. Uh, if, you know, if you feel the way I feel about math, uh, about your client, you probably want to let them go. Um, I, I think this is uh, I think I think there's a good points. I think these are good points in, in terms of figuring out what should be done and what shouldn't be done. It's, it's time to wrap it up. Um, so I, I like to do I like to do something really quickly. I'm just going to sort of I want to look into the things you can do proactively because we've all stepped in this in this minefield, too. Right. We've mm-hmm. all made mistakes in our intake process that caused us to end up with someone that we probably shouldn't have worked with in the first place. Um, so I, I jotted down notes when Kettle was talking. That's where we've come to in 2021. I'm now taking notes from Catalina Belmares uh, to improve my life. As you I, should. I, yeah, As you yeah, should. Yeah. I, I, I never thought this day would come. Um, but, uh, but the first thing is um, being clear about how your workout's going to happen. Like, like Kettle said, she had the client and like, I want something new every day. You know, she, she wanted uh, what Joe Dowdell calls entertainment. Um, <laughs> Which I love, I love that, that term. term. That's a great. That's the, isn't that the perfect term? I have used that. Shout out to you, Joe Do, uh, Joe Dowdell. I've, I've used that term with like eighty five hundred clients since I heard it. You know, I don't do entertainment. Um, you know, I'm I'm here to get you to your goal. So be clear about how your process actually works when you're actually going to be training. Make sure that they know what it, how it how it goes, and even get them to repeat it back to you. Um, number two, on the issue of my pacemaker client. You know, make sure that you get all pertinent medical information and you drill down for the the facts. You know, don't let them casually say, oh, I'm doing pretty good. Or, you know, no, I got no issues. Like if you have your par queue in front of you, which you should have, that's another that's another topic for another time. Run down it thoroughly. Make sure you understand 
Um, and then, and I think that would t- tap into sort of uh, psych- psychological challenges too, because you're sort of not equipped for that either. Um, and the third thing that I that I've run into is issues with um, issues with food, because that happens a lot. Like food seems to be the most challenging thing that I deal with. Uh, so I like to get a, and this is something we do in OTA level two. I just sort of always like to get a, um, a three day food log. And I know that might seem off topic, but I like to get them to write down what they've eaten during the course of three days before I start working together. It really helps me understand things. It, you know, they may not be as specifically honest as you'd like for them to be up front because it, you know, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's, mm-hmm. uh, again, it's like when you have someone clean your home, invariably you're going to clean the house before they come over to clean it. Yeah. You don't want them to think that you need people to clean your home. That's how people sort of, <laughs> yep. I mean, it's human nature, right? That's that's what people do with trainers and coaches all the time. You know, they're going to be much more likely to sugarcoat their situation than they are to blatantly say, you know, I, I binge on Cheetos every night behind the cabinet door. Um, but, but it can be helpful to get that. Uh, and I wanted to get, drop two books, too. And mm. neither one of these are written by Jonathan Goodman. Uh, don't <gasps> tell him. I, don't tell him I said that. He's not here. He doesn't need to know. Uh, <laughs> we can do whatever we want. <laughs> right, right. He's he's in he's in federally <laughs> prison in Mexico making a shank right now to toothbrush anyway. So he'll be fine. He won't hear this. Um, I'm sorry. A shiv. I think it's a shiv when you make it out of a toothbrush. It's a it's a shank when you make it out of a uh, metal object. Um, but in any case, <laughs> I'm sure he knows the difference by now. Uh, but in any case, uh, two books. One is motivational interviewing, uh, mm-hmm. maybe even particularly motivational interviewing for fitness and nutrition professionals. Great book to read so that you can get past some of those sticking points. When you think you're dealing with the overly difficult client that you want to fire, like the people in our group who say, oh, get rid of them. Um, what you may be doing is just underserving to Amber's point. Motivational interviewing is a great uh, book for that. And the other book that I highly recommend is Crucial Conversations. Mm -hmm. It will give you a methodology for having those uncomfortable conversations in a way that's not threatening uh, and does not uh, and non-judgmental as it's interpreted by your client. They talk about adding to the pool of shared meaning uh, in that book. It's a great technical book if you if you don't have the natural disposition that Kettle has, where she doesn't have an issue having. These, you know, big emotion driven conversations, uh, crucial conversations is a great book for you to have. And anything else for, uh, from from either of you, you two ladies that you want to add here? Feeling good? We all right? Well, those two are perfect. Add, all right. uh, yeah, we, 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 boundaries early and set expectations. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries early. Please don't let people contact you all the time, anytime when they want to. Um, and even if you have a separate methodology for that, that, you know, cannot possibly connect to you personally, like whether, whether it's email or whether it's a Facebook group, like something that you can literally turn off, um, that, you know, that that's non-distracting. That's, that's super helpful. What, that's a great statement, Amber. So I think, I think we, I think we landed the plane. Okay. Today, uh, it seems like we touched down a little turbulence early, but once we got to 30,000 uh, feet, everything was pretty much smooth. Um, so you can, you guys can go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and lock in your tray tables and return your seats to the upright position. The captain's going to turn off the no smoking and no seat belt sign uh, <laughs> and uh, and you're free to move about the cabin. Now, we've once again solved your problems in 50 minutes or left less here at the online trainer show. Send any contraband that you have to Jonathan Goodman in <laughs> Federale Prison in Mexico. Uh, we'll get the address to you. From what I understand, he could use some soap, uh, some dry erase markers for some reason. I don't get that. Uh, crossword puzzles uh, and a Tickle Me Elmo uh, to give to a cellmate. I don't know what that's about. Um, but we'll see you next time here on the online trader show. Jingle, jingle. Uh, ha- have a day. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast.